Okay, so today's topic is a topic that uh, took me quite a while to wrap my mind around. Um, and as I mentioned in the very first of the videos in this series, uh, really this is kind of like a video blog of my learning process, and I'm sharing it with you. And the reason that I bring that up is just in case I do make a mistake, uh, I would certainly appreciate uh, somebody letting me know. Now, I'm going to use an example uh, that we've used before. And let's take a quick look at what we're doing here. We have a, um, a dog show. And the show would be the parent to all of the vertices. And then there are three different uh, categories in the show. We have the Husky, the Collie, and the Irish Wolfhound. Um, and each one of them have three dogs. So that's the data that we're dealing with. And um, when I go to try and make this data look good, like hopefully it does here in this picture, I go to the um, to the documentation for the layout that I made, which is an MX stack layout. And I'm looking at the variables for that documentation. So for example, let's take spacing. And I see here MX stack layout dot prototype dot spacing. Now, if you know anything about JavaScript, you would know exactly what that means. But since I am in the learning phase, I didn't quite understand exactly what that meant. I knew from looking at other examples that I needed to make a new MX stack layout and I am going to attribute it to a variable called layout and then wherever it said in the documentation MX stack layout dot prototype dot whatever I could just um, instead use layout dot whatever. I just didn't understand exactly why that worked and how it works and it actually makes a little bit more of a difference when you are looking at the functions. And here I was completely confused where it would say MX stack layout dot prototype dot move cell equals function whatever and I was completely confused of exactly what that was trying to say. So today I'm going to try and explain a little bit about the prototype um, again, if you are conversant in JavaScript and have a pretty good idea of how, um, how it all works, then you may want to skip this lesson. So here's basically the way it works. If I wanted to see how MX stack layout was created, I could actually go into the MX stack layout.js and there I would see the original function. And if you take a look at it, it's pretty straightforward. It's a very simple function. It starts with functions, as we all know, MX stack layout, and then it takes as arguments graph, horizontal, spacing, the X position, the Y position, and the border. And then it attributes each one of these to a definition by calling this dot horizontal um, and if horizontal is not null then horizontal is true likewise this dot spacing and if spacing is not null then spacing is zero etc etc and from that point forward we speak about mx stack layout dot prototype dot horizontal equals null and what this does is it establishes the prototype for the MX stack layout. And within the prototype, there are variables. Uh, this particular variable is horizontal. The next variable would be spacing. The next variable would be the X position, then the Y position, then the border. And what the prototype does, very simply, is every time that we call new MX graph layout, 
it will create a new object that is exactly the same as the MX stack layout. If we go to the example uh, that we were creating, we have here var layout equals new MX stack layout and it's happening to the graph. And what that is telling the interpreter to do is to create a new stack layout that is exactly like the prototype of the stack layout that was already established in our library uh, which is found up here. Now I'm not sure if that makes sense to you yet or not but the way to think of it is very simple. Imagine you have many many cells and here I'm talking biology and each cell has a DNA and now I wanted to create a new cell with the exact same DNA. The way I would do that is I would make variable var layout that's going to be the new cell and I'm going to say equals new and take a cell that has the exact DNA as the previous cell. The cell here is MX stack layout. And by doing that, I have a new cell which is an exact copy of the MX stack layout cell. Now the next thing I want to do is to play around with the DNA from that original cell just to so show you a very silly but simple example of this I'm going to say that MX stack layout which of course is defined in our library but I'm going to add to it and I'm going to add to its prototype a new thing called smile and I'm going to say smile is equal to 300. Don't ask me why. And then, just to show you, I'm going to say window alert layout dot smile. And you're going to see that layout, which is a uh, created from the MX stack layout prototype is now going to have something called smile. Let's take a look at that. And there you go. Smile is 300. Eh? You probably can't see this on your screen, but it says 300. And the basic point is uh, pretty straightforward. And that is that the prototype is essentially the DNA of the object and whenever I make a new object it has all of the DNA of the previous object and I'm able to add to the DNA of that object um, by simply using the variable and the dot notation uh, but if I want to add to the DNA of all future objects that are based on the original MX stack layout object I would do that by adding to the prototype uh, of MX stack layout. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit complicated. I'm going to try and do a, another lesson on this soon. But until then, good luck.